everyone. Well, there was a major retaining wall collapse at a construction site for a high-rise residential building in Canada a few days ago. It made the rounds on social media. It's pretty dramatic. Let's take a look at that video. I want to get into what the apparent causes were for this collapse and get into, you know, why is this sort of thing happening on job after job involving geotechnical engineering ostensibly. It could have been catastrophic and led to the loss of life. Fortunately, the construction workers noticed tension cracking in the face of the shotcrete retaining wall. You know, things like this really fascinate me. Uh, I'm an engineer. I've had my own consulting firm for over 15 years. I specialize in deep foundation testing. And uh, I've been doing these videos on a variety of civil engineering projects and, and disasters in particular. And I like to bring my perspective based on my nearly 38 years of experience in the industry. So I want to get into what apparently caused this retaining wall failure. City officials say it may take months to understand the cause. Based on what I've seen in the video, I don't think it should take that long. It seems pretty obvious to me what some of the main issues could have been here. So they were building a 40-story residential tower in the town of Coquitlam, British Columbia. This town's just a little bit northeast of Vancouver. You can see this retaining wall failure happen very quickly. The way the soil poured out of here, it looks like a mixture of clay and sand. It appears to be uh, relatively dry. It looks not unlike uh, cutting a hole in the side of a five-pound bag of sugar and having the sugar pour out of the opening. That's exactly how this failure appeared to me on this video. Now let's take a step back and go over what is a shotcrete wall. Usually shotcrete's used in tunnel and slope applications, mostly to protect the surface from erosion, from weathering, and to protect from minor pieces of material spalling off and collecting as debris and whatever it is you're working on. It's commonly applied to the construction of below ground pools, so let's look at a video here of a shotcrete application. You can see in that case they had a steel reinforcing and they were blowing in this shotcrete with a pressurized air hose. Now shotcrete is typically used again on relatively small slopes based on my experience. I'm quite shocked that someone would have a shotcrete retaining wall of this magnitude for a major construction site. So what is shotcrete? It's basically concrete without the coarse aggregate. You have sand, water, cement, and also typically you have small fibers that help reduce tension cracking in the face of the shotcrete wall as it cures. Now I have to say, judging from the scaffolding that was at this construction site in Canada, it looks like this shotcrete wall was in excess of 60 feet high, which is a very, very big retaining wall. And uh, I, in my experience, have not encountered someone using shotcrete for this application. So you have high soil pressures acting on the backside of this shotcrete wall, which produces tension cracking in the face of the wall. And as we know, concrete isn't very strong in tension. More commonly for temporary excavation support, I'm used to seeing soldier pile and lagging wall systems. So a soldier pile is an H pile that's embedded in the ground, either by driving or installed in a pre-bored hole that's backfilled. Usually the bottom of the soldier pile extends about one and a half times the height of the wall. That's just a rough rule of thumb, but some distance to provide lateral support from the loads imposed by the exposed portion of the wall. In this photo, we see timber pile lagging and you have a strut or whaler that's used to transfer the load from anchor rods that are obviously embedded in the face of the wall that tie back into the soil or rock. Here's what this looks like in profile. Also, you can have struts used to provide additional support to a soldier pile and lagging system. So typically anchored systems are used for retaining walls or for slopes, say, along a highway. You have a rod that's installed through a drilled hole or driven into place, and then there's a nut that transfers the load to a faceplate, and usually for soil applications, this faceplate's rather large. Now you can see after the failure here that this soil just poured out of the collapsed section of shotcrete wall, and the anchor rods and the faceplates are just dangling. 
So apparently there was no failure of the anchor rods themselves. This was a localized failure of the shot creep. You know, really this retaining system looks like it was copied from something that would be used for hard rock. Here's a picture of a slope that's been stabilized. It's a rock slope. You can see the rock anchors and the faceplate, and there's a nut that connects the rod to the faceplate at the face of the wall. And you can also see a steel mesh that's draped across the slope that's underneath these faceplates to confine any pieces of broken rock uh, up against the slope so it doesn't fall down and create a hazard to the roadway. So again, these are relatively small face plates and uh, this application is good when you have really strong rock. I wouldn't expect to see a retaining wall system like this in weak soils. For any retaining wall design, you have the most pressure exerted against the wall when the soil is weak. Sort of like when a person has good core strength, they're able to do a lot of things. But uh, when the soil is weak, it imparts a, a large pressure against the retaining wall. And clearly that's what's happened here. The soil was really unconsolidated since it poured out like sand, as I mentioned, once an opening was created in the face of the shotcrete wall. And again, uh, this wall height of 60 feet for this application is just utterly shocking to me. I mean, I'm used to seeing heavily reinforced steel concrete retaining walls, or again, the soldier pile and lagging system, or braced excavations with sheet piling uh, and struts and whalers to provide the lateral support needed. And uh, to me, there's just no excuse for these kind of failures. I mean, again, it could have easily been a a fatal uh, incident with this wall collapsing very rapidly as it did. So the city has ordered an independent third-party review of what went wrong. And again, they said it could take several months to get the results back. I, I don't see why. I think it's just, to me, an obvious misapplication for this type of retaining wall system. Uh, I'd be curious if any of you have seen a shotcrete retaining wall with anchors without any strong reinforcing elements on the face of the retaining wall actually work. I mean, what's, what's the tallest wall you've seen? This is, again, well over 60 feet in height based on the scale relative to the scaffolding nearby. So it's unfortunate these things occur. I don't understand why in the modern age, uh, why these incidents seem to be occurring on a more frequent basis. Perhaps there's just too much development happening. Perhaps the municipalities, the cities and the province don't have the people, the resources to govern all of this development. But again, you know, sometimes these walls collapse because there are hydrostatic pressures from water accumulating behind the face of the wall that wasn't expected. This material looks bone dry. So it wasn't obviously any unanticipated hydrostatic pressures that caused this problem based on what I've seen from the video. It, to me, it just looks like a wholly inadequate construction methodology for the loads and the height of this wall. So I thought I'd give you a, a take, my take on this. Be sure to check out the link in the description to this video to download my free guide to the biggest civil engineering disasters of the past 100 years. And thanks for watching.